Welcome to Echo Rock Overlook. If you look over the edge here, you'll be able to see uh, the lake and you'll be able to see a multitude of family cabins and cottages that are here along the, uh, the other side of the lake. This area actually used to be a, a private residence. Um, and as you head down the hill after we're done at this stop, look off to your left and you'll be able to see an old staircase that used to go right down to the lake and probably a boat landing or a boat dock down that way. And on your right hand side during the spring and summer months you'll be able to see daylilies which show us the evidence of humans in this particular area as they are not native to the forests of Wisconsin. Let's talk a little bit about geology. Our area was formed in the Lake Cambrian area, area era about 500 million years ago. This was actually an inland sea, and as all of the sediment and sand settled down, that's what's created all of our sandstone and our sand, sandy soil in this particular area. 10 to 20,000 years ago, the leading edge of the Green Bay lobe of the Wisconsin glaciation began to melt. And that area, that edge of that leading moraine, was actually right over by the present day Kalahari and headed south and southeast. And as that water melted, the bluffs of Baraboo, like Devil's Lake, and of Rock Springs held back some of that water, backed it up, and so that when it finally blasted through, as that water rushed through, it carved all of the sandstone here in this particular area. So it created Mirror Lake, but it also created the Wisconsin River, the upper and the lower dells as we know it today. Our sand is very soft. It's sedimentary, meaning that it's settled down and compacted naturally not under any pressure or force from anything else and so it's easily eroded. Um, that is why we have a no wake lake because all of that water, all the water sports that that create a lot of waves end up eroding away at the sandstone cliffs and um, eventually some of that can be undermined to the point where the cliffs fall in. We have been fortunate because we've been a no wake lake for such a long time that our cliffs haven't shifted or changed very much. Each year we do have a little bit of, of slough off that happens as a result of the changes in weather because weather will take and erode it. The wind, the rain, the snow, the sleet, the ice will all take its toll on it. Um, so as a result of residents that live along the lake and their initiative back in the 80s, they were able to help bring about the no-wake lake status, which has preserved our cliffs. Our cliffs are about 50 feet tall, and they're covered in pine and oaks. The trees right here to my right, these are red pines, and you can tell because there's a red hue to the bark, as well as that it, it, it's got scales, so you're easily able to identify that. So we have red and white pines in the park that are native, and then we also have black, red, and white oaks. So that is most of our, our species here in the park that are native. In the 1960s and 70s, just over by Ishnala, there's an old paved path where the Wisconsin Dells ducks used to come and do tours on the lake. And in 1977, that business no longer came to the park because there was a downturn in that particular kind of entertainment, in addition to that we realized that it was causing some, some issues for erosion along the lake. The lake shore is, um, set, like I said before, is 75% owned by state and 25% owned by private landowners. The lake was formed back in 1857 when Horace Labar built a dam down on the east end of the lake. It's where the, the cliffs narrow and so it made sense to build about a 121 foot long dam that was about 21 foot high and it was all made out of wood. And it, dammed up this particular water, which is the Dell Creek water that comes in here. There's, a sm there's some other smaller tributary creeks that play in here along with some springs. The water, the, the area was called Labar Pond for a number of years. And then a Wisconsin Dells resident who actually saw the lake for the first time and saw all the beautiful reflections because of the cliffs, we don't get a lot of crosswinds or choppy waters. We often have a very reflective kind of water surface. And she exclaimed that it looked like a mirror. And so then Mirror Lake name stuck and, and um, a good thing because it really truly represents the ambiance and the atmosphere here at Mirror Lake. In 1893, the Timmy family bought the, the 
dam and grist mill from Horace Labar, and they developed a self-rising pancake mix um, called Timmy's Pancakes. In 1925, the decaying wooden dam was repaved and covered with concrete to stabilize it a little bit. In 1957, after the Timmy Mill had sent, sold their business to somebody else and it became the Mirror Lake Roller Mill, there was a horrible fire that destroyed the mill. And the, the present, the, the current owners at that time could not afford to rebuild. And so then they shut the mill and never rebuilt it. Um, and then over time, the dam continued to decay and eventually the state took ownership of the dam and it is now totally concrete. Uh, it provides a nice little portage for those who are kayakers or canoers that can go from Mirror Lake right into Lake Dalton so that you can extend your, your waterway travels if you'd like to. Um, there's also a memorial park down that area where it talks about the Timmy Mill and all of the impact that it had on the local economy because it was able to take the local farmers wheat and harvest it and process it um, to, to provide an economic um, lift to the Sauk County area. There's also a neat little place that was called the Grottos and it's where there is sarsaparilla, root beer and some other things that were sold out of that little area um, and that's that's kind of denoted there as well so that you can kind of see that. It was a naturally cool area so it was really nice and refreshing to be able to stop there and have a beverage and it was a little bit cooler in temperature as well. Down at that end of the lake as well, down near where the dam was, there was also a boat landing. And that is where the guests from some of the hotels down on the east end would board one of the two boats here on the, on the lake and they would be motored up to the west end of the lake near Ferndale and they would uh, dance the night away at the dance hall that was down at the Ferndale area. Um, so it was a nice little travel way. They got to see a lot of the lake, the rock formations, and then they were able to socialize and, and um, dance the night away up on that end of the lake. On the east end of the lake is where there were a variety of hotels and motels. Um, the, probably the most famous one was the Morris Hotel, and that was owned by Lou Ringling, who was the widow of Al Ringling, who was the owner of the Ringling Barnum & Bailey Circus in, in Baraboo. Um, she owned the Morse Hotel for many years and then eventually it became the Mirror Lake Inn. Um, the, un unfortunately there was a tragic fire that destroyed the hotel and then at that point then uh, Lou Ringling spent her, her waning years in downtown Baraboo in a home there. So at this point um, as you walk down the hill take a look at there's an opportunity for you to walk around the Echo Rock Trail or the Echo Rock itself. It's a rock formation all by itself. Uh, take, a, take a peek around that and as you come down the hill to that area you'll see a, a massive red pine. And I'd like for you to take a close look at it and see if you can put your arms around it. Last summer I had some help and we actually measured that tree and estimated it, its age to be over 200 years old. There's a method that we can use where we can measure up so many feet and then the circumference and do some math and stuff like that. And we determined that that tree was well over 200 years old. And think back and, and as you look around and, and look at some of the other trees, think about what this area might have looked like because a lot of our trees here are not anywhere near 200 years old, but there's some trees in the park that are very, very old. And so it's kind of one of those things you kind of wonder and, and use your imagination of what did this area look like before all the trees populated. You'll also, on the back side of the trail, you'll be able to see Ishnala Supper Club. And then you're going to swing back around and you'll come up the hill and you're going to head toward Ishnala Bridge. And I'm going to meet you there for our final stop on our tour today. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.